castle in Kunitz. So here in Kunitz, it says Schloss, it means a castle. It says the Deutsch Ordens Kommende. The Deutsch Orden, these are the Teutonic Knights. And exactly in this time, afterwards, they came and, and uh, they, they did a, when they came back from the Crusades, they did a, um, a crusade against Poland. And then they invited all the Germans to come and live in Poland. And they uh, founded uh, Silesia, Schlesien, where Auschwitz, where they founded Auschwitz. So it's all connected to Switzerland, you know, again here. It says 1226, Switzerland was founded in 1291. So it says that the castle was given to the Deutschen Orden, the Teuton Teutonic Knights. And here's some more about the Ordens Rittern, the Teutonic Knights, Deutschen Orden. They're very much uh, connected to the Templars, the uh, uh, the Deutsch, Deutsch Orden, there it is, Deutsch Orden. That's 1528. But they came first, like, you know, just before the founding of Switzerland. And in this time, they, um, they built all the, um, the castles in Poland, um, like in Marburg. And this is the Knights Rittersaal. Yeah, so this is the complex here, and that's the uh, the castle. Yeah, I already filmed it once, but I, I didn't focus on the uh, the Teutonic Knights. So here, in fact, they gave it back. The Teutonic Knights, they didn't need it anymore. In 1554, they gave it back. You know, they already had Silesia, and they found it. You know. The, um, the castles of the Teutonic Knights and here too there's um, the, the Teutonic Knights here Retta Bruder the, uh, the Knights Brothers well, you know Templar stuff eh? so yeah that's here in Bern Kurnitz and uh, yeah yeah look at So, that's the castle here, Kurnitz, with the Swiss cross on it, and uh, there's the, uh, the water source. Burn. And that's part of it as well. They have a different way of building castles here. In Kurnitz, Bern in Switzerland, where also Kim Jong-un, the Swiss North Korean dictator lived, there's the Church of the Black Cross being part of the Kurnitz Castle. And the Church of the Black Cross is a Protestant reformed church. And some of you probably already know what a Black Cross means. And what kind of people depict black crosses and whom or what they follow? This picture here is from Wikipedia, Kurnitz Castle. And the name here, Commandery Church, that means it's by the Templars. It's from the French word La Commanderie des Templiers. So all uh, castles and churches of the Templars are called commanderies. So this is how we know it's Templar stuff, who founded Switzerland anyway. But this is a, a subcontingent, actually, of the Templars, called the Teutonic Knights. And yes, first they let me in, in that church, yeah? Nobody telling me that I couldn't, but then shortly after I went in, the whole apparent atmosphere changed. And they started pushing me around, laying their hands on me, and getting offens offensively physical, which you will see in the footage. 
It seems that something is awakening here in Octagon, Switzerland, and it's like they pick up on me, like I'm being tagged. Every time getting attacked during the rare mo instance I'm able to go outside, when I have someone who accompanies me. And this never happens abroad, you see. Never in France and never anywhere else, only in Switzerland. It's like my sheer appearance sets something nasty free in them as apparently the Swiss invisible world of their Templars and Baphomet occult react on the for them detectable energies around someone. And me, I strongly believe in universal justice and worldly peace for humanity. And the Swiss absolutely react violent and, uh, and hateful to it. Hey, you can see the, uh, the Swiss cross here on, on the devil here. And the, and the red crosses here on the guys here. So this is this is the Swiss belief, and I don't know how they do it, you know. But but, but it happens. I don't know how it works, but it does. And Swissy and their evil inhibitions does have some sort of an ability towards this direction. It's quite chilling to feel these evil Swiss energies piercing into one's back really, which all happens in the realm of the invisible world over which I have no power and I have no clue either how it works, but you'll see it in the footage of the Black Cross Church in here in Bern, Switzerland and, and what happened. Just wait and see. But I suppose the sixth sense is a reality and sometimes the only bell ringing to protect us from worse. And I was most certainly glad to get out of that hellhole of the Black Cross Church, where their club members reacted so collectively, without even, even talking to each other, probably communicating in ways beyond my knowledge. And in a similar way to those World War II hardcore Nazis did, and who were of course all Swiss, as I've proven in my video, Auschwitz made in Switzerland. Just watch those hateful, nasty Swiss faces and those of the priests, priests of the Black Cross, who are most certainly no followers of Christ, but are rather connected to another alliance. They show no mercy and for sure none of Christ's love around. Well, look at the footage yourself here in the Swiss Church of the Black Cross. There we go. Sit tight. So oh, this is inside the church of the Teutonic Knights. Let's see what it says. I think it's a funeral or something. I can't read it now, I'll read it later. Maybe I was lucky. Oh, that's Teutonic Knights. Deutsch, let's are on. Quite a special neighborhood here, sort of snobbish. Don't touch me, don't touch me. Please go out, we have now a celebration. Yeah, I'm, I'm finished in a moment. Ich würde bitte aufhören mit Fotografieren. 
English. I don't speak German. Well, we have a yeah. funeral here. Yeah, I'm finished and, uh, in a moment. Huh? What do you say? Don't touch what me. You Get your hands Go off out. me. Go out. Get your filthy Nazi hands off me. Don't touch me, okay? Yes. But Just don't you, touch me. Please go out. Yes? We have a few I'll drop a here. Don't touch me. I'll drop a complaint. Please go out. Excuse me? Please go out. Don't give me any orders, will you? What? You damn Swiss Nazis. Yes. Yeah, look at all the Nazis. What are you calling? You're calling something? No. Huh? Please, please. Huh? You're a please bunch of Swiss Nazis. Don't touch I, me. I make a phone. Don't touch me. Go out now. You what? Go out. You, you call who? Call it You call the police? Yes. Why? I do it. Yeah, why? Tell me why. You, huh? you disturb a funeral? No, you, I was silent. I didn't say no. anything. You disturb me. Don't you, touch me. Go, yeah, go Don't out. Don't touch me. Go out. You damn Swiss Nazis. Don't. Yeah, get violent. Just go on, hit me. Go on. So I better get away soon. So this is the Teutonic Knights. These are the descendants, you just saw them, a bunch of Swiss Nazis, getting violent, touching me, pushing me. But this is the Teutonic Knights. It's a branch of the, of the Templars, and they took the entire Baltic. So St. Leningrad, so it's, um, St. Petersburg is just next to it. And that's where Putin is from, so that's what he is. And look at his long nose, it's aristocratic. So after the Crusades, they got organized here, and um, then they did another crusade to the Baltics and to Russia. And it was the Prince Alexander Nevsky who saved Russia. And Putin, he belongs to this. He's an enemy of the Russian people. He's just telling the Russians what they want to hear, just like Hitler did. And so they will obey him. So. He's their hero, like Hitler, and they die for him, you know. So you see how aggressive they get, you know. Look at this. Well, this is Switzerland, folks. They always call the police for nothing. So it's Kunitz. There's a lot of politicians here, rich people. And these Teutonic Knights, they took over the entire uh, region, of course. It all belongs to the Teutonic Knights here. The whole thing here. Swiss servants, Satan's seed. Oh, real charming people, aren't they now? Who get offensive and physical before they talk. The Swiss are only friendly when they smell a good business, like in the banking or tourist industry, when it concerns a lot of money. Otherwise, if you're an immigrant, you have to take orders of them. And just anyone, all the time, of just any Swiss, and just anywhere, even in the Temple of Christ. And you all saw that I followed their aggressive orders as I was out in less than two minutes after having received Swissies order. And I would have been out much faster if this Swissies wouldn't have made such a fuzz about nothing. And I really have to say this because the Swiss Nazi police carefully scrutinizes every video I make to see if they can nail me somewhere or somehow. But they don't intervene if some Swissy hits me, gets physical, offensive and pushes me around, being just some immigrant to them. Ah, that's okay for Swissy. 
I really have to say this, you know, because uh, in this country, in this fascist Nazi country, uh, you have to anticipate the consequences of every step you take. So, you fascist Swiss authorities, you saw I was in there for only three minutes. I obeyed orders of you Swiss and went out. And they let me in themselves. So what are you going to do next, eh? You Swiss Nazi cops, sue me again for being pushed around, me? I just wanted to film the church and the images on the windows, that's all. I didn't want to talk to anyone and just silently do my sightseeing tour and videotape the Black Cross of the Black Cross Church, that's all. And for three main reasons I am in fact allowed to film and publish those evil Swiss here. One, because I publish at YouTube California under the US laws and First Amendment of America. So out of the fascist reach of Swiss jurisdiction. Two, by law one may film and publish any public person of the so-called three P's, politicians, police and priests. 3. When you feel a crime being committed or any other act against the law, as here Swissy getting physically offensive, and it was only because of me staying cool and allowing their physical abuse that the whole situation didn't escalate into something bigger. But Swissy doesn't mind any law and only tries to get immigrants into their prisons, where immigrants even end up in prison when Swissy hits them. As it happened to me with that corrupt cop. Or when Swissy gets physically offensive. Well, just wait. You'll see what'll, what'll come next. Some more charges from the Swiss, the fascist Swiss state's attorney. And Swiss Nazi police coming round to hold me up. The whole country of Octogon is upside down, where criminals get a medal and the innocent goes to prison. And anyway, I was already filming that church when those horrible Swiss forced themselves on camera, while my camera was already running. It would never have happened otherwise as I was just quietly and discreetly filming the church just minding my own business. Just look at their faces, the hatred, the gestures, the violent attitude. Oh, this is what Octogon Switzerland is really like and how Swiss he really is. So these were Swiss Protestants of the Black Cross Church. As you could see that lady priest because Catholics have no female priests. And when I saw her standing in front of me with that microphone attached, I thought of Madonna or Whitney Houston going to do some satanic maleficent act or showing the horned hand and all the Isis symbology. Well, I suppose they kept that for later on, eh? And man, how that male priest with that wretched mouth lied and twisted reality. I mean, I went in there, was silent and respectful, and then it was them getting offensive for just two minutes sightseeing. Well, Swissy certainly has some uncontrollable inhibitions. Lots of work here for Bob Larson, the exorcist. So here it says, you know, that uh, the Church of the Black Cross is a Protestant Reformed Church. And so why else the Black Cross, apart from the Satanic Covenant? The Templars were founded in the year 1119, who spoke French originally, as was French the language of Europe's nobility. But as there were more and more German-speaking crusaders, as the many Alemannic Swiss Germans, a linguistic solution had to be found to consolidate the German identity. So therefore, a new branch of the Templars was founded, as in one of their names. 
the Black Knights of the German House. Now, what has a house to do with it? Well, that's from the Pharaonic Per A, uh, similar to the uh, White House or, uh, or, or Big House, uh, indicating the aristocracy's involvement in it. So, and here we can see they everybody was there until not in 1291 in Jerusalem and you know in the Middle East and 12 just like the Templars 12 they they went away and 1291 was the year uh, Switzerland was founded after the last um, stronghold of the Templars Ekon on May 18th 1291 so Switzerland was founded on August the 1st 1291 and then not only the Templars left, but also the Teutonic Knights. Like in the Church of the Black Cross. So here is the order of the Teutonic Knights who came out of the Templar. And I was at that Black Cross Church where there's also a, uh, a castle of the Teutonic Knights with the same... Uh, black cross and here it says what I just told you before about the Per A or the German house here it says Orden der Brüder vom Deutschen Haus der Heiligen Maria in Jerusalem it says Deutschen Haus the German house the Per A so with this we know it's Pharaonic it's not a house to live in and to do your cooking and go to the toilet this is a house as a, um, a, a bloodline, a royal house of the pharaohs. So just as the Templars, uh, uh, the Teutonic Knights, they were of pharaonic aristocratic descent. Just watch my film, uh, Pharisocracy, in which you'll find more about the, uh, the aristocracy. So, and so, 70 years later, after the founding uh, of the Knights Templars in 1119, a new order for the Germanic identity was founded in 1190. The Teutonic Knights of the Black Cross, also called Deutsch Ritter Orden in German, who were just as hatefully evil as their descendants of the Church of the Black Cross who you've just seen in action, revealing their true faces, not very in accordance with the teachings of Christ, but more into a covenant with the Black Cross and their Teutonic Knights ancestors. Who were, in fact, a bunch of evil Swiss butchers and mass murderers who roamed over Europe and the Middle East in that Swiss octagon tradition of murder, pillaging, and slaughtering innocent people. First for 200 years in the Middle East and Jerusalem, then again for 200 years in the Baltic and another crusade against the Slavic peoples of as Poles and Russians from 1193 to 1410, the Battle of Grunwald. These were called the Northern Crusades and here you can see the, uh, the coat of arms of the Teutonic Order, the Teutonic Knights, whose descendants you just saw in action before, and who, f with the Templars, founded Switzerland. Well, these are Templars. It's all the same thing, you know. With the initial Templars later on almost totally merging into the new order of the Teutonic Knights. Templars not really ended on Friday the 13th of October in 1307 and their founding of their new base Octagon Switzerland in 1291 because of the dispute with the old world order the French king Philippe le Bel of the old aristocracy and with the Pope leading to the persecution of the Templars all over Europe except for the Swiss Alps. And here again, just like in the other picture, you can see them standing together, which is not a coincidence, you know. And uh, just watch the uh, the Isis horns, like Madonna and, uh, you know, uh, Maleficent and 
also related to the pharaoh's uh, Apis bull. Therefore, later on in history, all evil seems to come out of Germany and the Germanic world. Two world wars, the Thirty Year War, and endless wars between France and Germany. The Old World Order and the King of France versus the New World Order or various French kings against the Knights' Orders, the Knights' Templars and the Teutonic Knights, all because of this problem between Philip le Bel and the Templars. And it went on for hundreds of years, and if not thousands of years. These Swiss Black Knights finally settled down in the Baltic state which is now Latvia, Estonia and Lithuania. So it, it says, this is on Wikipedia, it lasted for 300 years and it still does. Only now they're underground, you know, in secret. It already was a secret orders, order. But now they're just integrated everywhere. So here you see where it is. Here's Switzerland. Here were the descendant in the black, in the black protest, uh, the uh, the Church of the Black Cross, and here this is very interesting. Here is uh, where the, the water is going in. Here is uh, what used to call be called Leningrad, and which is now Saint Petersburg, where Mr. Putin is from. Uh, maybe you see where I'm, where I'm getting at, right near to the influence region of the Teutonic Knights from Switzerland. I come back to that later, just keep it in mind. And without this you cannot understand the Second World War. And um, so, you know, in the Second World War they, they just finished what they wanted to do, like um, in the Middle Ages to the Russians and what they couldn't really do at that time. So they finished it off many hundreds of years later. And, uh, yeah. So here it said, the state of the Teutonic Order from 1260 to 1410. And it went on longer. So here it says Prussia. Yeah. So maybe understand who the Prussians are. I'll come back to that later, don't worry. So without this, without knowing this, the, Crus the Northern Crusades and the Teutonic State and what they wanted to do and what they tried to do then and they lost every battle against the Slavic people um, you, you cannot understand Operation Barbarossa against, uh, in 1941 against Russia because Barbarossa was one of them, he was a Teutonic Knight you see? and that was financed by Switzerland with one billion Swiss francs. As I told you before in my other film, uh, Holocaust trains through Switzerland. You understand? It's all related to Octagon. <laughs> it really is. Therefore, during World War II, the Swiss SS Standartenführer Karl Jäger of the Baltic Einsatzgruppen A, A got so much support from the local Baltic population, killing every single Jew in the region. Well, because of their ancestry of the Swiss Teutonic Knights, who also founded Danzig, Königsberg, and the Marienburg Castle, which later became known as Prussia. So here you can see, you know, the uh, uh, the Germans don't have to do anything to just see to it that nobody. Uh, gets away. Yeah, they're just standing there, you know, taking pictures. And the local population, these are Swissies. They're doing it all. Yeah, they're doing it for them. They enjoy it. You know? If you give those people a chance, I just showed you in the church, you know, and all the, all the evil they did in their lives. You know, I I know it by now. You know, the, the Swiss had children, slaves until 1989, and none of these people did anything. Just like here. You see all the blood? You know, this is all blood. They're lying in the blood. All these, you know, dead children, pregnant women, 
Swiss are doing it. They came from Switzerland. This is Octagon, descendants of the Teutonic Knights, the same ones in the Black Cross Church. So here you see, this is a German Prussian Iron Cross from 1813. Um, and uh, here you see Octagon of the Templars. And here is the Teutonic Black Cross. So this is the uh, symbiosis, in fact, of the Teutonic Knights and the Templars together. You see? And Swissy, you know, they keep their, you know, the homeland, the base, they keep it, you know, neutral. They never did anything where the money is, you know, and then they go and kill people all over the world, you know. First in, like, here, the uh, the Northern Crusades, now, well, first the in the uh, the Middle East, in Jerusalem, and everywhere, the Second World War, and of course also the First World War, you know, it was, that was really a Prussian war, and this is what the Prussians are, Teutonic Knights and Octagon, so, and it was definitely made, the First World War, it had nothing to do with the, uh, the murder of the Archduke in uh, Sarajevo, it had really absolutely nothing to do with that. It was a war made by the uh, aristocracy and the uh, the German Emperor Wilhelm II, who was just before he was in Switzerland at the house at the same uh, Ulrich Wille family of Switzerland. Uh, same thing all over happening in the Second World War. It's always Swissy, Swissy, Swissy behind it all. Octagon, Teutonic Knights, Templars. What shall I say more? And these Prussians are descendants of the Swiss Teutonic Knights. Therefore, Prussians have such a resemblance with the Swiss character. And even the Germans make jokes about those fanatic military Prussians, whom they don't really understand and not even recognize as normal Germans. Prussians were, and still are, in fact, fanatic military Swiss mercs. Here you can see that. Uh, the, uh, this, this is recent, you know, in the German magazine. Preussen, that means Prussia, and they, they call it a, a, a warmongering state. And they understand the Prussians just as much as they understand the Swiss. For Germans, the Prussians, they are, they are like a funny bunch and always making wars, you know. And here you see the, with the Octagon, the German Emperor uh, Frederick the Great, also called uh, Fritz, the, Fritz the Faggot, uh, the Schwule Fritz. And um, Hitler was always carrying, as I showed you before, a portrait of this guy everywhere he went. So, well, uh, you know, into what sort of Teutonic Knights thing Mr. Hitler was with all those black crosses on the airplanes and everywhere. You know, it's, it's, it's still, it's all an octagon here. Templar's cross, it's all the same thing, you know. And this is Emperor Wilhelm. William the Second, the guy who was in Switzerland just before the First World War, with the same family, Ulrich, Ulrich Wille, and uh, he started the war. The aristocracy, oh. SS, it says. <laughs> so, it's Swiss. They're just as militarized, and but Switzerland is the base. You know, where the money is and always are neutral and and the other ones do the wars for them but it's all it's it's under the same command poison prussia the uh legacy of the teutonic knights and they came out of the templars and they were in jerusalem and they founded switzerland and it goes on and on and on and now they were then they went to argentina and to the united states with the red line and the uh, the paperclip operations, they're all over. And now we got ISIS, you know, also in black. It's it's the same thing all over. So there it is again, like in the Black Cross Church, Deutsche On, Deutschen Haus. I mean the German Haus, as of the Pharaohs. And um, they founded Switzerland first, as they are a branch of the Templars. And then they found Prussia, founded Prussia. Here it says, the Deutsche Orden, uh, the, the, the Teutonic Knights, they founded Prussia. A little bit later. 
Marienburg. So the Swiss Prussians, the Alpine Swiss and their secret military octagon Nazi Templar orders have pushed the Germans and Europe in numerous times into wars. Therefore their slogan is Helfen, Wern, Heilen to help, to defend, to heal. To help meaning to intervene military-wise somewhere in the world as crusaders so-called helping the Christians in Jerusalem while in fact stealing all the gold. So here you can see a t-shirt like neo-Nazis love to wear. Or the Nazis helping so-called poor, poor German minorities in the, in the East who in fact lived in peace with the Poles and the Czechs or the USA helping against Saddam Hussein in Iraq while shooting everything to pieces with depleted uranium and steal the oil. So this is what Swiss Nazi Templar Teutonic Knights mean with help, which is more a sly Swiss, Swiss euphemism to conceal the true objectives. And I tell you, Nazis really know this. And this is why they put it together with a Nazi plane. And here you see the black Teutonic, the black cross, as in the black Swiss, uh, the cro uh, as as in the Church of the Black Cross in Switzerland. And it says Helfen, Wern, Heilen. And because of the last one here, it says in fact, Heil Hitler, Heil Hitler. Because of the last part of the uh, the slogan of the Teuton Teutonic Knights, you know, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. What, what kind of a sense does it mean, Heil Hitler? You know, otherwise, like being nice to the guy and you know, have a nice health, you know, like Heilen. It also means to cure or to like a disease or you know. Well, they, 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 this is the disease, what they call a disease, what they are like curing, the cure, or the, um, the final solution, you know. It's, it's very evil. And here you can, you can also see the, um, the Mason checkerboard uh, configuration, as you know. And as I told you before in one of my other, and here's the Templars V, you know. And as I told you before in one of my videos, it is in fact a, uh, a a white Swiss cross with the Teutonic black cross in it, as the black cross uh, church in Switzerland. So this is where the Heil Hitler, Heil Hitler, where it comes from, which is H8, uh, HH, and now they have the 88 because of this as a, uh, <laughs> and this is octagon 88. <laughs> Believe me, folks. It's all from Switzerland. Then to defend and the second part of their operation just stands for war, plain war, and the chaos of the Ordo Abkauer. And the third part of the operation to heal is the Ordo part after the chaos, to rebuild, infiltrate on all key positions and consolidate their power through the invisible shadow government of the Mason web and ruled out, out of the Alps motherland and base of Pharaoh. So, Helden, Wern, Heilen of the Teutonic Knights is clearly what we see the New World Order doing now all over the world. These Teutonic Knights were very similar to the Nazis, both in black like the SS and both into cowardly assassinating defenseless women and children. Which is a real Swiss habit to cowardly attack the defenseless, as I too have to experience here in Octagon of the Alps and see how these Swiss Teutonic cowards terrorize me and my family. But when being confronted with real armies of the Slavs 
And just as in World War II, the Dark Knights lost about every battle, of which the Battle on the Ice is the most well-known, where in 1242, Prince Alexander Nevsky on Lake Pipers beat the hell out of those Swiss Teutonic assassins born out of the Templars. Here you can, this is in Wikipedia, I put it in the descriptions for you. Here was this uh, battle here, and here you can see it, the Teutonic Order, Livonian Order, same Black Cross, all these satanic Swiss orders. And until today, 2015, Alexander Nevsky is still Russia's biggest hero. Then, after having lost about every big battle, Teutonic Swissy went underground in small groups, infiltrating the Russians and, of course, those poor Poles. They smiled through their teeth in the habitual Swissy way and pretended to come work and live, but slowly creeping into all key positions, as in the video Swiss Sleeper Agents in USA. So here comes some more footage of the Teutonic Knights Castle in Bern and around the Church of the Black Cross. Well, can you all see the Baphomet here? And it has, uh, here's the Swiss cross. And why is this thing in the middle? You know, well, uh, a pilot like in, in, 19, in the 1920s, he saw that in Egypt, the pyramid has in fact eight sides. It's like bent in the middle. The sides are all bent in the middle, which you can see here. And I showed you in, in the Octagon, The Empire of Darkness and some other films, that the, uh, the Swiss cross and the Templar's cross uh, are, in fact, out of a pyramid. And here you can see that the side of the pyramid is, uh, and here, you know, so it, it is, in fact, twisted. It's bent here in the middle. And the Swiss cross looks exactly the same, in the same way as that uh, horrendous uh, Baphomet picture of the, uh, of the Templars. So here is Baphomet. I explain you what it means. Ba, fa, ha, me. The uh, the souls return to the pyramid. Ba is the souls. Me the pyramid. It's all pharaonic. See my other vids for that. And it gets weirder. You know, here is a goat, which is a mammal. You know, and here is a sort of a snake. You know, the two eyes here, the mouth. And the snake seems to get its food from the mouth of the mammals. It's like the reptilians are, are feeding themselves on, on mammal energy or mammal meat. See? And here you can see the, old, the whole image, which you can see just right after in the, uh, in the moving footage. And so here was the buffer mat, here the Swiss cross. And here you can see a crown, you know because that's where they're from, it's, it's the aristocracy. And every detail in it has a meaning, it, has all, it, it all has a sense. And there it is again, the Baphomet here, with the Swiss cross. And here's this thing at the, um, which looked like the snake, which was underneath before, and now it's on his head, like being a torch. So, the same, the same thing of the Templars here on that Swiss Teutonic Templars castle. I made the uh, uh, footage one year ago in May 2014 and already uploaded uh, in this video here about Kim Jong-un, the Korean dictator living in the very same Teutonic community as the, uh, the castle of Teutonic Knights is and the uh, the church of the uh, the black cross maybe he went in there most probably and me here in switzerland cannot openly watch my own video anymore on my own channel and therefore um i i found it on somebody else's channel the same title as i had so here i, I can see my own film on somebody else's channel 
Well, thank you. Very well done. It's by Spirit Wolf uh, of the Wild. Sounds very Indian. Native Americans. Well done. You see, with the nice wolf in it here. Homitaku Yasin. So, um, you know, this is information Swissy wants to hide from the world. So, I'll show part of the footage again with some new information. Therefore, for talking about that cheese-loving Swiss dictator sleeper agent, Swissy managed to block that video in most countries for obvious reasons, due to the Swiss censorship, laws of the Omerta, Swiss laws of silence. It says, the big cheese. Kim fell in love with the treat when studying in Switzerland. Well, I showed you in the video where he did study and where he lived and where he went to the Church of the Black Cross, eh? He is Swiss. He looks a bit different from the outside, but I tell you, there he is Swiss. I told you in the Pharaoh show how they do it, you know. First, there's a Swiss witch that goes and marry a, a Korean guy. Then the outcome will be like um, uh, a half cheese, <laughs> a half cheese Korean, and um, the father will be kicked out of Switzerland, as they do with foreigners, they can't see their children, you know. Or the woman goes back to Switzerland, uh, the child is going to be raised in a Swiss way. Afterwards, if it's a girly child, if it's another sister of Isis, She's going to find herself, you know, going to North or South Korea, whatever, or find herself another guy, uh, Asian, North Korean, and they're going to make a child very quickly. And the outcome of the child is already quite North Korean looking, you know. But then the same thing happens and the child is being raised with Swiss on Swiss cheese. Well, that's their error. They made an error here with the Swiss cheese, eh? Which is the inside. The inside is all Swiss cheese. And it got a lot of bleeding holes in it, you know, in their story. Like the cheese. So, from the inside, it's 100% Swiss. And the outside is already uh, much more Asian looking, you know. So... This and uh, three, three more generations doing it like this, the outcome will be, will be this fatty here, but the inside it's totally Swiss, you know, and it's of course much easier to do these sort of things, you know, in America, and in Africa. And here's the title I put in the descriptions for you. It was a uh, half a year ago, not even half a year, yeah, half a year ago in 2014. Kim Jong-un loves cheese so much he's ballooned in size and walks with a limp. What do you know, eh? So it's probably not so good for the, uh, for the Asian uh, genetics to eat too much Swiss cheese. But, yeah, well. And here's another Swiss sleeper agent, a Swiss cheese eater. Pretending to be a, a tough Russian. <laughs> well, I come back to that one later. And remember, he's from Saint Petersburg, which is right next to the uh, Baltic power sphere of the Teutonic Knights, just bordering to it. Eh? And this is where Mr. Putin is from. So the whole story is full of holes, just like his Swiss cheese, eh? Another Swiss cheese eater. This is, let, let's say, this is the mistake they made in their perfect crime. Yeah? So, I can't stop wondering, you know, seeing this picture, if this smile here of the, of the, of the Swiss cheese geezer, uh, if he's smiling after eating the cheese, you know, as it is ballooning him up, or is it more like before having, you know, an appetite for some cheese? I, ju I just wonder, you know. So, I'm going to show you some more footage of the place, exactly the place where Mr. Cheese Geezer used to walk around in Switzerland, at the uh, Church of the Black Cross. 
Maybe he knows the priest I met and the other ones. He probably does, you know, it's... They're all related to each other. And the, um, the castle of the Teutonic Knights. This is a Teutonic Korean. Don't be mistaken. This is where he lived exactly there. He was right near to it, you know. And when there's somewhere, when there are Templars, there are Masons, you know. And they rule the whole world. So that, that's why he was there. That's why he was living there. You know, Mr. Cheese Geezer. So here comes some more footage of that place. So this is in Kunitz. It's real near to Kim Jong Un from Switzerland. <laughs> 1610 with the famous like the Swiss Templars cross. Templars. Obelisk with the world domination and the devil. Always next to the water for Isis. Very old church. So this is all next to where the dictator where the dictator lived. Now let's have a look at that grave there. It says Baumeister. That's a title in a uh, Freemason lodge. And Baumeister. Nobility. I don't know what that is. Uh, it looks like uh, it looks very occult, you know, with the two pillars. I don't know what that is. Ihr habt auch nun Traurigkeit, aber ich will euch wiedersehen und euer Herz soll sich freuen. So they're talking about the resurrection and the uh, uh, like life after. Baumeister, yeah, like means amazing. So here is the Rittersaal or Hall of Knights, of the Teutonic Knights, uh, which is even said on the entrance door with an official tourist sightseeing indication on the door. Now, if you think, therefore, you're invited for sightseeing, well, you're wrong. It's just a Swiss trap. So Swissy can call up the police again, make problems, and force themselves on camera, making themselves important, as you will see on the uh, on the footage just after. So just watch the following footage of these Swiss troublemakers. So this is the knights, the knights room of old people. <laughs> We don't, we don't want to disturb anyone. <laughs> I'd like to know. Well, it's, it's, it's actually, it's not of your business, yeah? We don't want to hear your Nazi shit, yes? Bye-bye. It says, uh, one more time, um, the King Henry the Seventh giving away his castle in 1226 to the Teutonic uh, Knights Order on the shield uh, outside the castle. The German king Henry VII or Heinrich der Siebte lived from two, uh, 1211 to 1242. So when he gave the castle away to the Teutonic Knights in 1226, he was only 15 years old and only lived another 16 years after. Now it's the same crown you find on the, um, on the police logo of, of Switzerland, of Bern, and of their judiciary. So, you, know, you know who's ruling, who, who the ones are that are, are in power. And exactly 50 years after the king's death, Switzerland got their so-called independence 
through the foundation of Octogon in 1291, which was led way through this king offering bases for the new rulers and still of aristocratic descent, which can furthermore be proven by looking at the crown of the Swiss police and Swiss Justice Department in Bern, with a crown in their logo. So here you can see it. This is um, the Justice um, Gericht, you know, it means Justice Department here, of Bern, with a crown on it. Well, why is there a crown? If the Swiss say, we, the Swiss, we have a direct democracy, and we are ruling the damn country ourselves, why should then there be a crown? And here it says Strafabteilung, that means there's a prison. And this is the prison in Bern, it's completely sealed off, uh, where people get heavily uh, tortured by code O2T, as they did with that Austrian guy who wanted to sell banking CDs to Germany and the IRS in uh, the United States, uh, for which in only two times, uh, two weeks time, they suicided the man. It says Anwaltschaft, you know, Amthaus in Bern, with the logo of the aristocracy. Here, yeah, I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit. There you go. Well, well, why is there a crown on the bear? Do bears have crown in the forest? Do bears have crowns in the forest? No, they don't. You know, the bear is probably the the working class, the people. And the crown is on top of it. They are still there, you know. But the Swiss are very, you know, obedient. That makes a different the difference, you know. And and they're very mixed with Pharaoh because of the uh, due to the uh, prime noctis. But, I mean, this is the proof. The crown is still ruling. So the king g gave it away to the uh, the Teutonic Knights, the castle in in Bern Konitz. But they were all still of aristocratic descent. They're still there. You see, they're here. And for the Swiss police, same story. You see, the crown on it, the police. Um, they're the ones who are terrorizing me, giving me murder threats, you know, and lying stuff together. The Bernese police. And they, they've been given orders. They are given orders by the crown with the fleur de lis on it. You see, well, why is there a crown on top of the bear, of the on top of the police? You know, <laughs> well, I mean, in the times of the kings and queens in the Middle Ages, there was no police yet, but there were knights. So they are the knights of the well of the Templars, and they are the Teutonic knights. You know, who, who came, settled down here, founded the country, and then went on to to the Baltic, killing people, murdering people. You know, and, and First World War, Second World War, well, you name it. They're behind it all. Now, let's go back to the Baltic and have a look what the Swiss Teutonic Knights have done, all the atrocities in the Baltic. And as Leningrad, or now St. Petersburg, is the nearest big Russian town next to the Teutonic territory, and also on the Baltic Sea, in World War II, the Nazi Teutons knew exactly where to attack and drop their bombs on the starving population and killing more than one million men, women and mostly children of St. Petersburg, then called Leningrad. And to the Russians, it's a well-known documented fact that they were betrayed from the inside by the descendants of the Swiss Teutonic Knights, being Swiss sleeper agents for centuries in the region, killing Russians and their children from the inside out, from the inside out, like a Swiss virus and worldwide Swiss speciality of Swiss sleeper agents. And uh, this is from uh, Wikipedia. Here you can read also about the um, civilian ca casualties. They even even numbers like one and a half million and then another million died even after the war so 
There you can see the dead body. So this is next to the, you know, it's important because it's it's right next to the Teutonic uh, sphere of influence, or where they, uh, you know, where, where where they had their territory. And here it says, under civilian support of military operations, the Nazis had a special intelligence unit that operated in secrecy, focused on causing more death and destruction in Leningrad through sabotage to destroy the morale and spirit of its citizens. You know, like killing children and, you know. Some of the Nazi secret agents were ar arsonists arrested while setting fire at storage facilities in besieged Leningrad. You know, killing the food for the babies and the children. Hundreds of thousands of people dying because of that. Water and food supplies were often found poisoned and infected by the Nazi spies infiltrating the city. Oh, this is horrible. What, what, what a way of warfare. You know, it, it was meant to murder. You know, it, it really is a, spe a Swiss speciality. Well, who can do this? You know, take away the food for the children and, and poison the wells. And who can do this? You know, it, I tell you, this is very, very Swiss. They've always been doing it. And they are the descendants of the Teutonic Knights who first came after the, um, uh, the Crusades in the Middle East. They first came in Switzerland and together with the Templars, they founded octagon and it goes on and it goes on and now there's a big one coming up so when the nazis attacked russia in 1941 and financed by one billion swiss francs for operation barbarossa the russians actually believed to live through attacks of the teutonic hordes again and even said so um, among each other and in fact nothing further from the truth even more if you see here the swastika in the um, the cross of the of the black Teutonic Knights just as in um, in the black the black cross church in Switzerland so this is from the Nazis the Second World War now carefully watch this eye, his, this is Emperor Redbeard, or Barbarossa, just look at his blue Hitler eyes, the same blue eyes as Hitler. Yes, Mr. Hitler had blue eyes, like this, uh, but as everything was in black and white, and as he was always sort of angry and shouting, you know, his uh, pupils uh, dilated, you know, it always looked like if his eyes were black, but he had very blue eyes, and just imagine this guy, with the Hitler moustache, eh? and with the uh, the uniform. Well, so why the name Barbarossa for the Swiss financed Russia campaign? Well, that's again nobility related and also Teutonic Knights related. Emperor Barbarossa lived from 1155 to 1190 during the Crusades and died on 10th on June 10th in Turkey while on the Third Crusade. And in the very same year of 1190, the, the Teutonic Knights were founded, you see. He was the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, also called Frederick I of the German Hohenstaufen dynasty, per A, big house bloodline of Pharaoh. To which, in fact, also Hitler belonged. Therefore, giving the name of one of his ancestors, to the Crusades of 1941 and against Russia. Another Hitler linked to the aristocracy, just as he was always carrying a painting of another Frederick with him, of uh, the Prussian Teutonic Emperor Frederick the Great, also called Fritz the Faggot. You know, the aristocracy has always been trying to attract young men, you know, to wage their wars for them and and them getting fil filthy rich out of it. Like today and before the Second World War, you know, all this sort of, you know, for instance, Borsenschaften, like in the university, you know, they even, even today, you know, like in Austria and in Germany, 
um, th they are the elite, you know, they're, be they're becoming judges and, um, you know, uh, intellectuals and all that. Or uh, police um, commissioners, you know, and, and so they are at the university. And even today, they're walking around with sabers, you know, and it's, why wow, it looks so nice and, and man, uh, like in manhood, you know, to have a scar over your face from mouth to ear, like, you know. And uh, the same thing was happening in the, um, in the Second World War, you know, and before. All these uh, so-called wannabe warriors, you know, trying to make themselves brave, you know, and uh, to 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 think of of a of a middle-aged um, to, to ad identify themselves with a middle-aged um, medieval knight like this one here, Hermann von Salza. And the Germans they even had SS Panzer divisions or battalions with uh, uh, called Hermann von Zan Salza. Uh, Hermann von Salza, yeah. It, all, it has always been the expansionist pharaoh's aristocracy waging all these wars. Then Barbarossa's grandson, Emperor Frederick II, was a very close friend with the Grandmaster of the Order of the Teutonic Knights, Hermann von Salza, also an aristocrat. Uh, who was the leader of the Teutonic Knights for 30 years, from 1209 to 1239, and who transformed the original hospice order into a sole military order. And here it says somewhere that he was a, um, he was a landgrave uh, from a castle, you know, even a, here it says, uh, Drubor Castle. It's always the aristocracy, and look here, the black cross, just like in the that Satanist church where it was uh, with all those horrible people there in Bern. In fact, if you think of war, you should immediately, without you know, hesitation, think of the aristocracy, because they always were the war makers, and they still are the war makers. So war is aristocracy, war is nobility. And here we can see how the Holy Roman Empire uh, of uh, Frederick I and the Teutonic Knights of Hermann von Salza were very close, operate as one, and so Barbarossa for the 1941 Teutonic Knights um, operation uh, against Russia financed by the Swiss. In fact, I personally knew descendants of Hermann von Salza and I could tell you more about it, but um, about why else the name uh, Barbarossa in 1941. But I prefer not for the time being. The Grand Master of the Teutonic Knights, Hermann von Salza, and the Pope together actually gave the Order of the Black Knights the same status as the Knights Templars, thus preparing the disappearance of the Templars merging into the order of the Teutons right before the founding of their base in the Alps. Meaning that the Pope was in a conspiracy together with the Holy Roman Empire led by German kings against the French monarchy. Therefore the Templars never were really persecuted by Rome and the Pope, but only by the French clergy and the French monarchy in order to make the Templars and their immense wealth disappear without sharing with the French monarchy. Just follow the money trail and thy will be led into the light. So here it says in Wikipedia, Hermann von Salza. Hermann was a friend and counselor of the Hohenstaufen Emperor Frederick II. That's uh, the grandson of Barbarossa for whom he represented as a mediator in the papal curia from 1222 onwards. Pope Honorius III also recognized Hermann's capabilities and granted the Teutonic Knights an equal status with the Knights Hospita Hospitallers and the Knights Templars. There you go. After had gone into decline under previous Grand Masters. You see? 
the same status as the Knights Templars. They're just preparing the disappearance and more concentrated on concentrating on the Germanic warriors for the aristocracy, um, turning them into the uh, the knights, um, the Black Knights, uh, the Teutonic Knights. This is what happened. Coming back shortly to the other Grand Master from Korea about whom and the phenom ph phenomenon of Swiss sleeper agents I once discussed with the Chinese diplomat who promptly answered Yes, China, no. This called banana. Outside yellow, inside white. Which, of course, would make Swissy Korean here a double cheese. Outside yellow like Swiss cheese, inside white like Swiss cheese eater. Where, in fact, the East Asians are all entirely lactose intolerant. Except that one blown up octagon dictator. Amidst all, amidst all his lactose intolerant subjects. Here you can read in an article from Korea itself that they are lactose intolerant. You see, Here it's 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 by Sang Chung, a doctor. Uh, well, I put it in the description for you. And the other Swiss cheese eater, Mr. Putin, is one of them. And the Swiss sleeper agent and huge enemy of the Russian people. Only telling them what they want to hear. Just as Hitler did with the Germans. So they would die for the Fuhrer. So it's a very similar situation between 2014 and 1939. In Crimea there are huge Swiss... Um, uh, settlements of uh, Swiss sleeper agents like the Zurichtal, and this is Besser, it's next to Bessarabia. And the same st thing is here in the Baltic, uh, Danzig, that is now Danzig, is the, it is Polish. This is where the Swiss uh, knight, uh, knights of the, uh, the Swiss Teutonic Knights, where they uh, went to. So it, it's a very similar situation where the Swissy is just defending their their interest. Now listen, imagine being a profiler of a crime scene, trying to localize the perpetrator of a crime by giving 10 points for every hit at the possibility scale up to 100%. Then Putin worked for the Komitet Gosudarstvenoi Bezupaznostia, KGB, as a colonel. And all secret services being octagon and against the people, well, 10 points for that, Mr. Putin, or 10%. Putin is from the Baltic and from Leningrad, which is now St. Petersburg, which is Teutonic sphere influence. 10 points, Mr. Putin, 20%. Putin was assigned in Dresden, Germany, as a KGB agent and is totally fluent in German. 30% total, Mr. Putin. Putin even speaks Swiss German, says Swiss Burghalter, one of the seven Swiss heads of state and head of the OSCE, Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. A Swiss again, who is the head of it as well. 40%, Mr. Putin. So... Here it says in the newspaper, so here's Mr. one of the Swiss presidents here. Look at how they're smiling, you know, two brothers from the motherland. Otherwise you never see him smiling like this. Here it says, Ich habe ihn auf Russisch begrüßt und er hat mich auf Schweizerdeutsch geantwortet. So it says, I, uh, I said in, I, I, I talked in Russian to him. And he answered me in Swiss German. Here it says, Schweizer Deutsch. So, another one who speaks Swiss German. We got the, uh, the, the North Korean dictator who speaks Swiss German. Mr. Putin speaks Swiss German. Obama speaks probably Swiss German. So, they all speak Swiss German. This is Octogon. So, 40% Mr. Putin. 
Putin has his children born in Switzerland instead of in Russia. 50% Mr. Putin. In the 1990s, Putin had 42,000 women and children murdered in Chechnya, like a Swiss Teutonic Knight or by the Swiss Einsatzgruppen of Swissy Karl Jäger and being a Swiss mercenary tradition. And they did use mercenaries for that, who were called Kontraktniki. 60% for that, Mr. Putin, you Swiss fascist. Putin wages his war with the Ukraine, together with his Swiss pal Yanukovych, see my film about it, because the Ukraine is flirting with the NATO. But for his Baltic states of his Teutonic ancestors joining NATO, Mr. Putin didn't even mention it. 70% Mr. Putin. And Putin never says a bad word against Switzerland, though he knows that all the oligarchs who stole Russia blind during the priva privatization era of after 1989 all brought the Russian wealth out of the country with the help of their Swiss banks. 80% Mr. Putin and at least three of them here have um, connections to Switzerland. Here, here and that one. Putin loves cheese, just like that Swiss dictator from North Korea, who even lived where the Teutonic Castle and Black Cross Church are. Well, we spare you this one, Putin, and no bonus points for your Swiss culinary uh, taste, which, which is quite fishy for the least. But 80% is not bad, eh, Putin, you Swiss Teutonic, Teutonic fascist sleeper agent of Octogon. I know who you are, mate. It says here, House of Switzerland. So he's toasting with his Swiss brothers and eat some cheese with it. So you all see the Swiss crosses here on the Russian hats here and here on the Russian bonnets. You know, like military looking, uh, like, a, like a tank com commandant, you know, a tank commander with the Swiss cross and here's the Swiss cross and here so this is the same place as the picture before uh, where we saw Mr. Putin toasting a wine with another Swiss seventh head of state of the Swiss SVP uh, Nazi party in the Swiss house in Sochi during the Olympic Games and why the Swiss house as it says here house of Switzerland why house in Switzerland well, you remember I told you, I showed you about the uh, Teutonic Knights. That was the, the German house. And now here we got the house of Switzerland. And why else apart from that? Well, the Pharaonic Per A, or Big House, is thus defined just as the White House, indicating they're there all right. That Pharaoh is there indeed. So here it says in Wikipedia about Pharaoh, here the origin, etym etymology, here. Pharaoh, meaning great house, originally referred to the king's palace. Well, it's absolutely wrong. Well, it does mean great house, but it also means house pregnant, to, the tra to my tra uh, translation, actually. And it's not a house to uh, go to the toilet in, or, you know, a house to, uh, to do your cooking. It's a royal house, a bloodline. And Pharaoh did have, in fact, a white house in ancient Egypt, which they called Perhet, with Per for house or bloodline, as in Per A, which has been translated with big house, but in fact is closer to Per A, house pregnant, or born out of the house of Pharaoh. So this is, you know, this is more like mainstream uh, history what they want us to believe but these things go deeper you know just like the house of switzerland there's the house of um house pregnant actually uh, the house of pharaoh Th this, this is where it all started with therefore per is rather a bloodline than a building as the per hat has been interpreted by other historians as pharaoh's state treasury which is wrong to my humble opinion. 
Well, here it says. I mean, okay, he's on the on the right track some somehow, but it's it's wrong. Again, you know, in ancient Egypt, their treasury was called the White House. And I, um, according to my translation, it, it is ah per ah, ha, it is a house and being pregnant, and it shouldn't be translated with a house, you know, literally. Um, uh, the pronunciation is not very, you know, maybe it's Englified, I don't know, hedge, but it's more like head, per head. So the White House. The White House is not a house, and he calls it the state, uh, their state treasury. I put in the links for you. Um, now here's some more about it. Uh, the ancient Egyptian treasury had operated just like the US Treasury does today. You know, th this wouldn't be that important for them, you know. <laughs> Somehow their state treasury today is Switzerland and the Swiss banks, of course. But again, house is a bloodline. It's not a house to put the money to do the cooking or go to the toilet or whatever. Or to put the president in it in Washington. It is not. And, uh, well, I tell you what it is. Per Het, or the White House of Ancient Egypt, is the ruling house over Upper Egypt wearing the white crown. And Upper Egypt is in the south of Egypt, like where Akhenaten ruled, who is now back in his White House of Upper Egypt. Which is called Upper for Up River, considering the Nile flowing from south from Lake Victoria to the north into the Mediterranean. So here we see the um, uh, the white crown, here yeah, the white crown of uh, Perhet. They call it here Hedget. And this is why it call it's it's called the White House because it's the White House ruling over Upper Egypt. Uh, here. So well, look at it yourself. It, it's in Wikipedia. Put in the uh, description for you. So, uh, Upper Egypt is down south, like here, and Lower Egypt is like here, this is the Nile. And, um, yeah, it says Upper Egypt, that is Perhet. So the guy to the left here is Akhenaten, and he was ruling in Perhet, uh, with the white crown, over um, um, Upper Egypt. And therefore, the white, he was from the white ruling house. And this guy to the right, exactly the same face, it's a brilliant picture. Uh, um, he is from, uh, well, he is in the white house, you know. So, this is what it means. And these guys know that perfectly well. They all know it, believe me. They're not telling us, but they know it. And Switzerland plays a very important role in it. So this Akhenaton, and this is Obamenaton, White House, the the house of the the the, the ruling White House, and here, the Washington D.C. White House. They perfectly know it, and it's amazing that this he's a descendant. You know, it, it can't otherwise be that he looks so similar. And for the north, or lower Egypt, wearing the red crown, there's the red house, or Bertasser, being the ruling house. So, lower Egypt is more up here, and here you can see the red crown. So, red and white. You see what I'm getting at? Oh, wait, wait a minute. So, here's the red crown. You know, it says, Des Desret, the red crown of lower Egypt. Bertasser. And, uh, yeah, so there's a lower Egypt and an upper Egypt. And they were having a lot of problems, you know, like uh, having wars and problems, you know. Revolution against the old order, and, and of course, Akhenaten in upper Egypt, that was more like a revolutionary type of guy. And then there was Lower Egypt, like here, the um, uh, original conservative Egypt, if you like. 
It says in Wikipedia, ancient Egypt was divided into two regions, uh, namely Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. To the north was Lower Egypt, as I'm telling you, you know, and where the Nile stretched out, etc. And well, read it yourself. Uh, lower Egypt, because upriver, like going here, is Upper Egypt, just like anywhere else in the world. And in fact, this system of Upper and Lower Egypt is still being used all over in the world, you know, like um, maybe also North Carolina and South Carolina, I don't know. I, I should have a look at it, but most certainly in France, there's uh, Le Barin et Le Orin. Le Rhin, that means the River Rhine, that is uh, Alsace, uh, like in Alsace-Lorraine, uh, that's the east of, uh, of France, that's um, divided into two um, uh, departements, departments. And to the south is the um, uh, Le Haut-Rhin, so higher. So the south, is, it's higher, which normally you would say the north, it's higher, because if you look at the map, it's higher, but no, there's a river which is called Lille, which flows from the south to the north. So that's why uh, Lower Alsace or Baran, the Lower Rhine, is uh, to the south, just like in Egypt. So this is also something, well, we got everything from the Egyptians, don't, you know, everything. And here it says the red crown for Lower Egypt. And because the symbiosis or union of the two pharaonic houses or ruler dynasties of uh, Lower and uh, Upper Egypt, it finally took place in Europe through the Templars, also uh, red and white colors like the symbiosis here in the, 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 the double crown of Upper and Lower Egypt when they settled the wars and the, the problems among each other. So, here you can read it, there, here it says, uh, here, the white crown symbolized the pharaoh's control over Upper Egypt and was worn on occasions involving Upper Egypt only, well, here for Lower Egypt, and then the double crown was a combination of the red crown of Lower Egypt and the white crown of Upper Egypt. It symbolized the joining of the two lands and the pharaoh's control over the two lands. So later on in history, you know, they split again, you know, like you see, like we saw the uh, uh, the problems between the, um, uh, the, uh, the French monarchy with the, um, uh, with the Templars and the, uh, who were having this collar here, you know, the, the, the double crown collar of white and, uh, and red and uh, with the Pope in it and the, um, the Holy Roman uh, empire uh, with um, uh, German kings in it. So it's all related to this, you know. Uh, the symbiosis is finally uh, red and white together. <laughs> and wait, it even goes further. So it is therefore that Octagon Switzerland has a flag consisting of these two pharaonic colors of red and white of the red house and the white house and being neutral territory for the warring pharaonic parties being a place to talk and make treaties having all those geneva ngos and three letter abbreviation orgs a place for pharaonic neutrality for better organizing their war on humanity and they know it, you know, even the t-shirt itself has two colors of white and red. Oh, they know it. Oh, yes. All global decisions uh, get therefore always taken in Switzerland, together with all their interferonic peace talks. So whenever in history, present day or future, when you hear two fractions, red and white, fighting each other, well, then you know what it is. And as I've shown you in some of my other vids, the Swiss flag is the only one in the world being a square. So, you know, here you see some more flags, you know, like Canada, it's long, you know, here, or France, it's, it's you know. But the Swiss one is a perfect square, you see? It's different. This one is long here. And here's the Southern Kingdom. 
of Upper Egypt, here's the Northern Kingdom of uh, Lower Egypt, and here are the two to not united again. So this is why the, the red and white colors united, united kingdoms for peace. And this is the Pharaonic war crown in blue. So th this is why these other nations, you know, like France here and England, Australia, America, you know, they have these three colors because they are doing, you know, the fighting for the uh, for the United Kingdoms, you know. In fact, the UK is this here. This is the United Kingdom, <laughs> not this one. <laughs> So, you know, this is why there's the blue. This is the war crown. Maybe because of the blue blood, the blue blood, uh, royal bloodline of blue blood. And, um, yeah, so this is a perfect square. It's totally different from the other flags. And um, I will tell you why. So here's the original Swiss flag. Uh, the sides are equally long. It has to be like that, as I've shown you just before. It's a per so therefore it's a perfect uh, square. It's called Eid Genossi Zafana. Eid, that means the oath. So they are the Genosse, the, um, uh, well, the brothers of the oath, so to say. And uh, the red square uh, is for representing the base of a pyramid of Lower Egypt. Where most of the big um, pyramids are, and the true and original base of ancient Egypt. Therefore, a red base underground in the Swiss flag. And the white cross stands for Upper Egypt, Akhenaton's new revolutionary model, later taken over by the revolutionary aristocratic Templars, also coming out of a pyramid in 2D which I've shown you in my other videos, like Octagon, the Empire of Darkness. And later on in the Middle Ages and during the Crusades, depicted as the Red Cross of the Templars because of blood and revolution. But then later on, turning white again, as on the Swiss cross, because pyramids used to be white because of the white stone cover on them, which used to be there. The red base of the Swiss flag also corresponds with number four of the structure of power representing us, the people in red, as the base of the pyramid, who have to bleed for this royal aristocratic bloodline of Pharaoh. So in this video here, uh, Octagon the Empire of Darkness, I explain this. So here's the, here's the four, the base of it. And here's the octagon, and here's the hexagon in the middle, which has to be protected by the octagon from us. Number four here, the base of the pyramid. And this is all related to Switzerland. Switzerland is the base, the red and white base of the um, union of lower and upper Egypt. Neutral Switzerland, where all the money is, where they can keep it safe. This is the function of Switzerland, the base of all evil, Octogon. Here again, on one of the several windows of the Swiss Church of the Black Cross, it shows several black crosses of the Teutonic Knights and subcontingent contingent of the Knights Templars. Now watch the date 1226, the Black Eagle and the castle on the left. This means that the castle was given to the Black Knights in the year 1226. So here you can see the bigger picture of the medieval comics telling its story, with the king above the day 1226 and two Teutonic Knights with swords, a helmet under his arm and black crosses on their garments on the other side above the black cross, as if both parties depicted each on every side. And it was only this I wanted to film for you before those aggressive Swiss troublemakers came pushing me around. And I would have filmed more and more to tell and discover 
if not those priests of the Black Cross would have gotten so physically violent with me. The true face of Switzerland. There really is a, a huge problem in this country here. First, Swissy starts shouting and getting physically violent. Then they call up the police, as you can see here. Police always comes running if Swissy calls up. And then the foreigner is guilty. Then they say the foreigner did it. It's always the same thing. There's a real problem here, how they twist how they twist the reality and the truth. Oh, this is not a neutral, innocent country. Forget it. And in fact, here it says what the medieval comics in the window of the church just told. Here it says that King Henry VII just gave his castle away as a present to the Teutonic Knights. Say what? A king giving away his castle? Well, then they must have been out of the same family, house or bloodline then. Yes, all pharaohs. So this was written on the shield outside of the castle, the tourist shield for the tourist. But uh, afterwards, if you feel like going have a closer look, well, you better not. You, ju you saw what happened if you do. It's all a trap. You know, first it shows like there's it's a tourist attraction, so you want to have a closer look, won't you now? Well, if you do, then the Swissy trap it, it just falls, you know, and Swissy getting aggressive and violent, and you know, call up the police for you as a doing your sightseeing, as you have been attracted by the shields outside. And, showing it's a tourist attraction and something to see there and it doesn't say anyway you know it's not allowed to go in there these are the silent laws of switzerland you know and they don't care about any international laws neither about their own laws they only got their set of silent swiss laws you know, if it would have said on the door of the church forbidden to go in, I wouldn't have gone in, you see. But it's a trap. First, all the tourist attraction and things to see. And, you know, if you walk, and, and if you walk into that trap, you know, then you get pushed around. They call up the police and it, I think they should have written it down on the door of the church, you know, don't go in. But then, you know, at the same time, they, they try, the church is try to attract people and say wow come on come and talk to Jesus you know there's all love in the church and he's so nice and Christians and Protestants are so nice you know <clears throat> it's a trap I showed it to you it's all a trap it's a violent aggressive uh, evil trap there are no nice people in this church no Jesus no no love <laughs> Only the tourist attraction, but even that, you know, you, you get aggressed for it. Because you follow the tourist trap and the Jesus trap. You know, the tourist and the Jesus trap, that's what it is. You know, that's Switzerland. And if there are Templars, Teutonic Knights, Church of the Black Cross, Pharaohs and Nobility in Konitz, Bern, Switzerland, then there must be Freemasonry now. And yes, there is. It's a bit hidden as usual. And there is this guy here who calls himself Christoph Meister. Well, I'll bet you his name is not Meister. You know, Meister, that's a the master, like a grandmaster. The, it's, a, it's a Freemason title. And here it says, Konitz. And here it says here, Christoph Meister wird Stiftungsratpräsident, or uh, a bit more here, here it says. Christoph Meister, in 2012, wird neuer Stiftungsrat der Haus der Freimaurer. He becomes the, no the new leader of the, um, of the Freemasons. Yeah, Freimaurer, that means Freemason. 
it's all hidden, you know. And here it says, you know, all these people, they all have the same name. Here's one in Konitz, here's one in Biel, Sumiswald. Well, in Sumiswald also there is a Teutonic Knights Castle, Frauenfeld, Mauer. It, they all have the same name. He's living there, you know, and here, all these the guys with the same name. And, uh, well, this is what they do, you know. And uh, here too, it says, um, where is it now? Here too, Freimaurer Museum in Bern. So it's a Freemason Museum in Bern. Schweizerische Großloge. It's uh, the, the Swiss Alpine uh, Lodge Freemason o o Obedienzen. Well, etc., etc. So it just said here, Kunitz. Uh, where was that? Well, right here. Up here, it says here, Kunitz. So there are Freemasons. Well, of course there are. It's all hidden. And if there are Templars, Pharaohs, Teutonic Knights, Nobility and Freemasons, then there must be organized child molesters too. Well, then, yes, there are. This was in the newspaper. This is the, the name of that town there, Kunitz, where the... Uh, Kim Jong Un, the uh, not the paper tiger, but the cheese tiger, where you, where you lived, and where the Church of the Black Cross is, they're all there. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if this dirtbag priest knows more about it and about what his flock are doing when they're not in the church, probably leading the rituals himself, together with Madonna here. And well, at least they have a they have some sort of a problem with violence, you know. So, well, they know what's going on in their commune, you know, in this small town of Konitz. Of course, they know. They know all about it. The more, if you look at the Madonna Angelina Jolie maleficent Isis horns on the Teutonic helmets. Yes, the entire house of evil gathers in Octagon, Switzerland. The Black Knights, the Black SS, and now the Black Isis, all death cults and same Swiss totali totalitarianism. All through Pharaoh's United Kingdom of Octagon, Switzerland, making it all possible. This war on humanity. The Swiss flag of Pharaoh in the colours of the United Kingdom of Upper and Lower Egypt, uniting the White House with the Red House of Pharaoh, a place of neutrality for them, where the entire world's financial elite has the guarantee of financial safety and that for their pharaonic offspring, for their war against humanity. So here you can see the um, th this this was made by uh, Able Danger, good work, bro. And um, I hope you can do the um, put the white and the red crown of Upper and Lower Egypt for the White House and the Red House in this picture. We would be all glad if you could do that, Able Danger. Even the Lego Children's Toys Company knows it, so humanity's newborn slaves will get used to the idea of the planet's rulers in a sublimate way, learning the Swiss red and white colors of octagon of Pharaoh's red and wh white crown. And just as in the Swiss Teutonic Baltic in Bessarabia, it was the same thing. Where there are large Swiss communities like Zurichtal on Zurich Valley. Therefore, here in these two parts, the collaboration of the locals was the biggest to help killing other minorities for the SS Einsatzgruppen during the Second World War. In the Baltic with Einsatzgruppen, ah! And in Bessarabia with Einsatzgruppen, de! 
where the Swiss locals gave most support to the Black Knights of World War II and their genocidal program executed with Swiss precision. Uh, writing down all the numbers killed as in the Swiss Jäger report for which the Germans took all the blame after the war. So here you can see it. Uh, the, uh, this is Bessarabia. This is Einsatzgruppen B D. And uh, all this is Bessarabia. Even the Crimea, it's full of Swiss descent. And they came later. And before that, Swissy came with the uh, Teutonic Knights into the Baltic here. With Einsatzgruppen A. And this is why, especially here in the Baltic, with the in Estonia, Lithuania, um, they got together with this area here in Bessarabia, the Einsatzgruppen, they got most support of the local uh, population more than anywhere else. And this is because this is Swiss descent. They've always been killing and murdering people all over the all over Europe and now all over the world. And there's a big war coming up now because of them. Humanity has only one chance, you know, to make Switzerland stop doing what it's doing. That's our only chance. You know, we have to bite off the head of the of the monster. We have no other chance, believe me. That's where all the money is. It's what Putin is preparing his post-war. Yeah, there's a war coming up. We can all see it. Just like before the Second World War. Now don't put your head into the ground, you know. Wake up and let's do something. Otherwise our children are going to suffer again. And I told you the Swiss, they organized World War II and now they're doing the same thing. Through their Swiss banks, Putin, when he was gone for eight days, you know, more than a week, nobody knew where he was uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Well, they were discussing in the United Kingdom, the red and white United Kingdom, as i just shown you, in the Alps, they were just discussing the new world, the new world war and humanity's future. And he's preparing his, uh, his getaway car, Mr. Putin. He's going to live with his, you know, just next to his pal, Khodorkovsky. And we're all going to bleed for it. So, there's only one way out. I just told it to you. Wakey, wakey. So here you can see, in the middle of the war, on March 1st, uh, 1940, here it says, Deutsch Ritter Ordens. Here's the cross of the Teutonic Knights, just like here in Switzerland, where they organized from the, uh, in the uh, Church of the Black Cross. And here's his, his other symbol, also from the Pharaohs. And this is the seventh Reichsheiltag. And here it says Heil, you know, the healing day, because they're already in the process like of healing, you know, like this, the, 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 the final solution, you know, like healing. And this is the Heil, it comes from the uh, the uh, Knights Templar slogan of uh, Helfen, Wern, um, Heilen. So that means again uh, to, um, to, to help defend and uh, heal. And in fact, in 1938, Hitler forbade the Order of the Teutonic Knights. Well, that was all a sly Swiss lie, as you can see here in this picture two years later, in 1940. The same with forbidding the Freemasons, while Hitler's banker Jammer Schacht and 33 degree Mason never had any problems in the Reich. Adolf Switler was just a damn Swiss liar. So here it says in Wikipedia about the Teutonic Order, it was outlawed. Uh, its members have commonly been known as Teutonic Knights and it was outlawed, outlawed by Adolf Switler in 1938, but re-established in 1945. Well, why 1945? You know, because then they just went on doing it, you know, um, openly. But 
he forbade it, you know, like in 1938, and we all saw the picture of 1940 with that black cross. We just saw it, eh? And they even had SS Panzer divisions, you know, Hitler's Teutonic Knights, and it's just the same he forbade the uh, so-called the, uh, the Freemasons. Well, he, Mr. Switler was a liar anyway. The Nazis, what they did best was lying. Like they lied to the Jews and said, well, we're only going to bring you to a working camp, you know. Everything will be fine. It's, it's just well, a hard travel, you know. You have to be in a train for a couple of days and then everything will be nice. And when they got there, they said, well, let's have a shower, you know. Just have a shower. Just have a good wash behind the ears and all that, you know. You feel much better afterwards and we give you a soup. And then they were all gone, you know. This is what the Nazis did best. And this is so typically Swiss, you know. I've never seen so many lies in my whole life as here in Switzerland. They they don't do anything else. And then they present themselves to the whole world as being so nice, neutral and clean. You know, it, it's all from Switzerland, folks. Believe me. This is the United Kingdom of Pharaoh in the red and white colors. And all they can do is lie, lie, lie. This is how they got so filthy rich. And this is how Octagon got to ma manage to rule the world now, which they do. And just like the Nazis, the Black Teutonic Knights called themselves Das Herrenvolk, or the Master Race. An idea which is actually not very German in its origin, but very Swiss. And here it says, Deutsch Herrenorden. This is, this is what they call themselves as well. And later on, the Nazis, you know, this is about the Dritten um, Reich, the, the Third Reich, and the NSDAP. And here was the one we saw on Hitler's, uh, when he was having a speech there in 1940. And um, so... When it was translated, we are the Herrenvolk, with um, we are the master race. It, it's that that's correct, but it doesn't really hit the core entirely, because th th this is how it can be translated. But what Mr. Hitler and the other ones, these Nazis, really meant with it was the Teutonic Order, Deutsch Ritter on. This is what they meant, and here is the proof. Deutsch Herrenorden. Wir sind uh, das Herrenvolk. Uh, meaning, we, uh, we, we are from the Teutonic Knights. And this is, you know, coming back to, um, to James Bond. It's, also, it's all related to Switzerland. And Ian Fleming is the gentleman killer. And these are the gentleman killers, like, well, that's what they th believe, you know, but they weren't. I mean, if, if you kill babies and children and drop bombs on everybody's house, it's not really gentleman-like. But it, it's all, it all belongs to the Swiss, you know, concealing their true nature uh, of that clean and neutral state, which it isn't really. So, this is where it came from. The knights, uh, the uh, the Teutonic knights, and they're not gentlemen. Herren, you know, it's it it, it can be translated with uh, gentlemen. This is the German order of the gentlemen, you know, like Mr. James Bond and uh, wir sind das Herrenvolk. So, um, and the Swiss even feel themselves even superior over the Germans, which many German guest workers had to experience the hard way in Switzerland today. And here it says, the master rate in German, die Herrenrasse, das Herrenvolk. This is what I just told you, is a concept in Nazi ideology. And which is not oh, just the being the master race, but it's far more like... Um, related to the uh, the order of the uh, the Teutonic Knights or the uh, Deutsch Herrenorden. And here in that word Herrenvolk, which means not only master race, but can also be translated with gentlemen for Herren and people for Volk. That very same idea of that 007 Octogon gentleman killer. 
where its author Ian Fleming lived and studied in Switzerland and comes from a Templar Saint Croix Rose family and he knew and was friends with top Nazis all over Europe. So typical Spectre. I'll look at these two videos here for more information on the same channel. That's why during World War II the Nazis even gave Teutonic Order names of the Black Knights to the other Black Knights of the SS Panzer, Tank Battalion, Abteilung, Elf, Hermann von Salza, who lived from 1165 to 1239 and was a Grand Master of the Teutonic Knights with the Fleur de Lis symbol of the aristocracy in their logo, just as the Swiss town of Lis. And von Salza was of course a member of the nobility and pharaonic bloodline as all those gentlemen killers are and were. He got known for giving the Teutonic Knights the same status as the Templars and once rosen out of the Templars they got even just as important and merging into each other with the foundation of Switzerland in 1291, the United Kingdom of Pharaoh. So here you see it, this was a division Nordland of the, um, the German Panzer and here it says during this period, the Nordlands Panzer Battalion, SS Panzer Battalion Elf, was given the honor title Hermann von Salza, in honor of the fourth Grand Master of the Teutonic Knights. It's a bit odd, isn't it, if it was forbidden by Mr. Hitler, the Teutonic Knights Order, then giving the name of Hermann von Salza. It's all a lie, you know, Nazis, all they could do was lie. They said, well, we're going to fight for Europe against the Russians and all the other evil ones, you know. But what did they do? They dropped millions of bombs on millions of Aryan European children's rooms. You know, that's what they did. Children who were blonde and blue-eyed in Coventry and Warsaw and Warsaw, in Leningrad, in Stalingrad, even in Madrid and all over, you know, and um, they said, well, we love Europe, that's what the Nazis said, well, what did they do? They stole everything they, they could, you know, just as the Swiss police, they steal everything they can, they stole our trailer, they stole my computer, they stole 20 years of my life, so it's so typical Swiss, you know, you say, well, we're going to help you, you know, like they say in the, uh, the logo of the Teutonic Knights, you know, help defend heal well they're not going to help you know? and they're not going to heal anything either you know they just steal everything and then bring it into the motherland in switzerland the swiss people by the way still are in a crusade against the whole world with their paranoid deficiencies thinking the whole world is against them where the opposite is more true being the Swiss against all other peoples, like with their Swiss Nazi banks. So typical for a compulsive paranoia diagnosis turning reality around and upside down. Believing the persecutors being persecuted, being the very Swiss reason for persecuting, persecuting others in the first place. And it's a well-known fact that when people suffering from a paranoia disorder, as it is the case with these sick Swissies, then they have an uncontrollable tendency to develop violence and pathological aggressive behavior. Even leading to mass murder and genocide made in Switzerland. And this is just the tip of that alpine iceberg.